We're standing here in a region or sim called Stillman, on the edge of the original 20 sims that were created at the very beginnings of Second Life. In those days, you would look out here and you would see empty sea in all directions. What is today the central part of the archipelago of Second Life was, in those days, the edge of the world. Well, my name is Magellan Egoyan. I'm here for a second installment in the series called Second Life Geography. We are going to begin our detailed exploration with the northern continent. In order to portray the geography of the northern continent, one has to look at its historical development, as the geography is essentially structured or determined by the historical sequence of land creation. This map shows the location of the early sims within the broader context of the northern continent. Here, on the other hand, we have a detailed view of the early Sims. Remember, a Sim is the name given to the region of roughly 65,000 square meters of land that was originally maintained on its own dedicated computer. The region outlined in blue on the map contains the very first 16 Sims that were originally created. Those in red outline were added within a month, and together they form the 20 original Sims. These Sims were completed in the fall of 2002, long before Second Life was officially online. Let's begin our journey. We'll take a quick look at Natoma and the Ivory Tower of Prims. We shall look at the region of Stillman and then we shall move west into the region called Varney and on into Clara. This, of course, is the Ivory Tower of Prims, one of the best-known landmarks within Second Life. One of the interesting things about the Ivory Tower of Prims is that, because it's such a stable and long-term feature of Second Life landscape, it provides a very useful geographic landmark for the regions around it. The names of these early Sims derive from street names in the neighborhood of San Francisco near where Linden Labs was located. These are some examples of sites and builds to be found within the region called Stillman. Also they show the quite varied, even rugged topography of this part of the archipelago of Second Life. Now on this side of the escarpment, we're looking at the region of Clara and points further west. One of the issues I've been wanting to raise is the fact that although the landscape is stable within Second Life, land use can change very, very quickly, which can make finding stable geographic features difficult. The first wave of Second Life land outlined in blue in the map was actually divided into roughly three regions. The main or core grid, which was a region of three by three sims at the left of the blue outlined region. What were called the outlands, which was the two by two sim area on the far right of the map. And then a chain of three intermediate sims that acted as a bridge between the central area and the outlands. Right now we're going to look down through the regions of the Boom and Ridge. This landscape provides a good opportunity to point out that while the ease of construction within Second Life allows for builds that do not respect the morphology of the landscape, the relief originally provided nevertheless influences the kinds of constructions that are created. Although land use is mutable, there is a logic to it. Now we're going to look at the regions called Tabor, Welsh and Clyde, the three linking regions between the core area and what were formerly called the Outlands. 
This is the region called Tabor. Note the ivory tower behind in the west. Here, we're in the region called Clyde. This interesting building is the site of Textures Unlimited, one of the most well-known groups doing textures in Second Life. Now we're in a region called Hawthorne, which is an urban city modeled after Manhattan. The Outlands were originally areas for war games, where the safety limits were relaxed. Here's a region called Federal, to the southeast of the Outlands. Here's a region called Jesse, not part of the original 20 Sims, but today it's one of the regions that has full damage where you can be physically hurt. Now we've jumped from the easternmost edge of the core region to its westernmost edge. This is the region called Hama a very beautiful Japanese or Asiatic build that's been created. This now takes us north to the Sims of Perry and Lusk. Both Tahama and Lusk, as well as the Sim Perry, were part of the second wave of Sims that were created that is, following the original 16. Luskwood was developed very early on by a group of people who were interested in animal forms, called furries. There are other dedicated islands around Second Life for furries, but this is one of the entry points into these communities. And it's a very interesting part of Second Life. It enables all sorts of interesting encounters. Indeed, one might call Luskwood one of the social hubs of Second Life. So that takes us to the end of the presentation for today. Next time we're going to look at some of the Sims from the next wave of development and their relationship to these. And that will take us on, eventually, into a more complete look at the Northern Continent. Right now, I have some business to conduct here with my friend Zufa, so I'm going to let you all go. See you next time.